I'm Andrew Kelly. I was director of Bristol Cultural Development Partnership, now Bristol Ideas, for 29 years from 1993 when it was founded to May 2022 when I stood down to take up a new part-time post in the company. I'm talking here about Bristol, our organisation, what it has done, its impact and where it goes next. Bristol now is seen as one of the leading cultural cities in the country. It's a wealthy city in many ways and the strongest of the English core cities, a group that brings together the main cities in the country. It also has some of the most deprived areas in the country and suffers similar problems as cities elsewhere. Rocketing house prices, not enough housing for rent, poor internal transport, amongst others. It is the leading city in Southwest England, has a city population of around 440,000 and serves a wider regional population of around 1 million people. Minority communities now make up around 17% of the city's population. It is a city that is struggling to come to terms with some of its past especially its role in the transportation of enslaved people. Last year, a statue of Edward Colston, who was a leading figure in the trade, was toppled and thrown in the river, which led to a long overdue citywide debate. And like all cities, it was badly affected by the pandemic and has concerns about the future, not least with the cost of living crisis. It's a cultural centre of excellence in many ways. It's important to say, that Bristol has always been an important cultural city, housing Britain's oldest continuously working theatre, the Bristol Old Vic, for example. It's the place where the founding document of the British Romantic period, the Lyrical Ballads, was first published and parts were written in the city. One of the founders of moving picture film, William Freeze Green, was born and did early work here. There's an important 19th century Bristol School of Art which recently was the focus of a large exhibition in Bordeaux. Major international cultural stars like Massive Attack, Banksy, Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep from Art and Animations come from the city. It has leading UK galleries, museums, cinemas and festivals. But Bristol, especially the council, sometimes had an ambivalent relationship to arts and culture. Up until recently, it was not seen as important by some city leaders. National bodies like Arts Council England, who are big investors in the arts, saw the city as underperforming, especially as a regional centre. And they have been and remain critical of what they see as low investment in the arts. Over the past 30 years, our work, I like to think, has played a key role in marking and celebrating Bristol culture, developing new work, giving a greater profile to work here, putting more funding into the city and supporting artists, writers and poets. Let's talk about Bristol Ideas. I took up the role of director in April 1993. I'd always been interested in the arts, an interest which has grown over the decades. But I'm also interested in cities, in management, in making change happen, in politics, science and in issues like the environment. Anyone running the kind of programme we do, a programme which changes radically every one to two years, and which is about global ideas and challenges and solutions, needs to have wide ideas and wide interests. Bristol Ideas is a private company, though with charitable objectives. It was established following detailed research in 1992 and was funded by the three original partners, Arts Council England, South West, Business West, and Bristol City Council. The research investigated art forms in the city and their impact. It concluded that a body, independent of the partners, but bringing them all together to plan long-term cultural development in the city should be established. Bristol Cultural Development Partnership, as it was then and now Bristol Ideas, started work in 1993. It remains the only organization in the country organized like this there are many other models of cultural planning and partnerships. Each partner had their reasons for joining. Arts Council England felt that Bristol as the leading city of the region should have higher and greater aspirations for cultural development and activity. Business West, a body made up of private sector organisations, 
knew that culture is important to a city's business prosperity and saw cultural development as part of a wider programme of renewal. Bristol City Council knew it needed to be more ambitious in its approach to culture and also had to work effectively with others in the city. We had outstanding leaders from these partners who saw the value of culture in cities. And in recent years, both of Bristol's universities have joined the partnership, fulfilling a long held ambition to bring higher education into the organization and the planning for culture in the city. What is our approach? We seek to bring together arts and sciences, embrace the widest possible range of organizations and individuals, build on, celebrate, and commemorate Bristol's unique history while looking to the present and help raise and widen debate about ideas and issues crucial to the future. We aim to implement a few projects directly, influence as many organizations and individuals as possible to develop joint projects through coordination of initiatives, fundraising and marketing, and inspire widely so that all can participate and take pride in what the city does and has achieved. In this way, significant projects are created with maximum impact for relatively modest support from public funds. We do the early work that few others are able to do or indeed want to do, bringing together the partnerships, establishing the case for the project, raising funds. This means that organizations and artists can get on with the work they are best placed to do. It also strengthens the cultural sector and artists and writers and poets as funds raised by us go to these organizations and individuals directly. And this is something we have agreed from the start as a key model for our work. We have also kept a small staff throughout our history, never more than five people and for many years as low as one. At the heart of our work are ideas. And at the heart of our operation are core principles. Bristol's past contributes to Bristol's future. Great art should be celebrated and available to all. Culture is about arts and sciences and embraces subsidized and commercial activity. The arts and the creative economy contribute to economic growth. Partnership is critical. The more people and organizations that are involved in a project, the greater the opportunity for successful creative thinking and action. We lead where needed, but work through and with others where possible and appropriate. Extensive research is the basis for all work. Marketing and campaigning are part of all projects. Renewal of vision, work programme and activity is ongoing and based on thorough evaluation of all projects. Long-term relationships are nurtured especially for ideas, fundraising and project development. Bristol's future is the future also of our region, the West of England, and diversity is central to all our work. We have been influenced strongly by cultural planning ideas and work over many years from writers like Leah Gillardi, Charles Landry and Franco Bianchini, and organisations like Comedia. At the centre of all this is culture and the importance this has for people for the place where they live, study, work or visit, for jobs and prosperity, and most of all, for quality of life. Bristol Ideas started work in 1993 in four main areas, making the case for Bristol, building the case for the partnership and partnership working, establishing at least one core project and leading on the cultural redevelopment of Harborside, a very significant area of land right at the heart of the city centre. Much of the work of partnership building and planning is never seen publicly. Strategy development, networking, fundraising, planning and marketing. This is often the most underestimated, though time consuming of all work and remains so to this day. I would estimate at least 60% of our time is spent raising funds, building and managing networks and partnerships and developing strategies and business plans. Making the case for Bristol meant being involved in debates taking place elsewhere and those generated by us. We ran a series of conferences, for example, with linked books and publications. An early one was how you manage partnerships. Another looked at the impact of arts and culture. Two looked at legibility and cities. 
considerable time was devoted to the renewal of the harborside area, then a priority for the city. This was 60 areas of prime real estate next to the river in Bristol. Plans included a new concert hall, a new center looking at wildlife, the electronic zoo using media uh, techniques to tell the story of the natural world in new ways. And it was joined also by a science center, which eventually became a project called At Bristol, and now it's called We the Curious. In addition to the capital renewal of Harborside through culture, we also ran bids for the 1998 Year of Photography and the Electronic Image, and launched and managed the film festival Encounters, which was established originally as part of the national celebrations uh, in the United Kingdom of the Centenary in Cinema in 1995, but which was successful enough to become an annual event. We have since gone on to lead many festivals and year-long celebrations and commemorations. The development of Encounters was another good example of how Bristol Ideas works. The film and media sector is strong in Bristol, especially short film and animation. The partnership that resulted, bringing together BBC, Ardman, many other media companies, our media centre and the universities, led to a festival which is now in its 26th year. These early projects showed our approach at its best. Even if the Harborside Centre for, for Arts and Music eventually failed, and the year of photography bid was lost. They were about arts and sciences, key aspects of culture for us. They built on aspects of what Bristol was good at, even excelled in hands-on science, animation and short film, natural history media. And we adopted this model from the start of doing the work no one else was able to do before handing over to others to run. Right from the start, this approach established the partnership our work as a key part of Bristol's cultural planning. Art of Bristol Eyes has been the city of Bristol and the future of cities. We need to get cities right. As the world urbanizes, urbanizes rapidly, cities offer the solutions to the environmental crisis. At the same time, cities are developing in the wrong ways. Superstar cities becoming a world apart from the rest, growing inequality a housing crisis and tension and dispute over immigration are some of the polycrises we find cities now face. Much of our work over 25 years has been about creating new organisations and institutions and festivals and strengthening the cultural organisations and activity in the city. We've raised a lot of money for different organisations in Bristol, some of which I would say has helped save those organisations. We also wanted to make the city work for all. Bristol Legible City was an important development for us. This is a system unique to Bristol. We asked the question, what's the point of building new cultural facilities if people can't find them? Hence the need for new maps and signage. But Bristol Legible City also meant that we could look at how people used and understood cities and bring in different disciplines and thinking. Building on this, in 2015, we launched the Festival of the Future City which takes place every two years, as part of Bristol's European Green Capital Year. This was one of many projects we ran that year. We wanted big projects that could help people look at green issues in a new way. One of them was a huge mechanical spider made out of reclaimed military hardware. And Chicago artist Theaster Gates built Sanctum, a new performance space in the centre of the city. For us, and by now, when we're talking about 15, 20 years on from our work, cultural planning embraced all aspects of work about cities, the housing crisis, how to deal with concerns about immigration and promote integration, the future of work, social mobility and inequalities, cities and wildlife, and making sure that smart cities were for all, not just a few. And on the back of this, in addition to our Festival of the Future City, we launched a film festival about the future of cities as well. Inevitably, there have been some failures and disappointments. We were not able to complete the new concert hall, which would have added much to the renewed Harborside area and become an international symbol of the new Bristol. It also frankly dealt a psychological blow, and for some years the appetite for large-scale cultural projects in the city seemed to disappear. Losing the 2008 Capital of Culture bid was another blow. 
In truth, the odds were stacked against us, with the decision likely to be based on political and social need, and not necessarily on the quality of the application. But to be honest, we also lost it ourselves. And I learned from this to make sure that political leadership was always solidly behind a bid like this in the future. But it's still important to bid for things. Bidding shows confidence, provides a tangible reason to plan, gives you a plan to deliver and raises debate. The only failing in the end is to fail to plan for loss and defeat. On Bristol 2008, our Capital of Culture bid, we were prepared for this. And in addition to seeing culture rise up the political agenda in the city rapidly over the three years of work on this, we received much financial support, which meant we could deliver many projects in the four to five years after the bid, um, which saw us um, increase the amount of work that took place in the city, as well as the increased support uh, that we could give uh, to artists and writers and poets especially. There will never be another British city as European capital of culture because of Brexit, though Bristol is thinking of bidding for UK city of culture in 2029. These are just a few of the projects that we've worked on and delivered. Others include establishing a digital arts development agency to work on the future of arts and media technology. Southwest Arts Marketing to look at promoting the arts better. We've published over 30 books, including 85,000 copies of a 200 page cartoon history of Bristol, which meant that every household in the city could read about the history of their place. We've commissioned hundreds of artists, writers and poets to create new work and are currently working with poets in Nigeria and Canada, as well as the United Kingdom. Our work in recent years has been running our annual Festival of Ideas program and partner festivals of economics and future cities, each of which look at the great issues of our time and help people find solutions to these. Each one of these projects are unique to Bristol, many built on the remarkable history of the city, but all look to the future and each one in a small way help moves the city forward. In 2019, it was decided to move to a new approach. Ideas, debates, learning, solutions have become much more important to our work with the development of our Festival of Ideas. There was a need too to unite all areas of our work, all our projects, past, present and future in one coherent programme. As a result, Bristol Ideas was born and replaced Bristol Cultural Development Partnership. There are six new values. First, bravery. Great ideas are not constrained by caution, so neither are we. Difficult does not stop us. We are proudly bold and relish our freedom to be able to say, explore and debate issues and ideas freely. Secondly, rigorousness. In a world of clickbait and fake news, to us, thoroughness is anything but boring. Our rigor and respect for facts allows us to be accountable, credible, and on the side of the truth. Thirdly, reflection. For us, looking back, reflecting and analyzing is all part of being purposeful. Reviewing not only helps us gain knowledge from what has already happened, it helps us continue to move forward. Fourthly, agility. Ideas are forming, developing and evolving all the time, as are the issues they look to address. As true allies to ideas, we are ready to react and debate them. Fifthly, openness. We encourage discussion, we value debate, and none of that happens without a willingness to hear opinions um, and ideas that differ from our own. To inspire openness in our audiences, we are committed to being open ourselves. And sixthly, future focus. The ideas and issues we discuss reach into the future and will be felt years, decades, even centuries ahead. We are ready to go with them. There's no doubt that Bristol is in a far better position than it was 25 years ago. The range and quality of activity culturally is stunning. The city is now seen as a cultural leader and is the city that many others aspire to becoming. There have been many temporary setbacks, lost bids, austerity measures in recent years, and the pandemic have all been short-term problems and some will cause long-term difficulties, 
but I have no doubt that Bristol will bounce back. We can't claim all the credit for this, and nor would we want to. Our partnership has been a partner and colleague with many others, but I think it has helped change Bristol for the better. Thank you.